Indeed. Good morning. It is clear that uh, systemic uh, uh, resuscitation is uh, absolutely uh, essential, and restoring circulation if you have a cardiac arrest is necessarily useful, but you should uh, uh, remain humble when you have uh, uh, this type of case that's been described a moment ago. There is a sudden mortality. Some of our patients retain a relatively high level of uh, lactate. So. The question is, why do these patients remain in that condition? Can we do anything better? Could we try to further optimize uh, uh, tissue uh, uh, at that uh, level and uh, through perfusion? So we should go back to thinking about the organ itself. Our aims are, of course, to improve tissue perfusion uh, and oxygenation uh, rather than to uh, push blood out of the heart. How do you improve circulation uh, of blood, uh, red blood cells uh, uh, and uh, uh, other circulation within the uh, organ? So the second question that comes to mind is the specificities of microvascular alterations and dissociation uh, from uh, uh, microcirculation and uh, macrocirculation make microcirculation, important target for resuscitation. So what do we know about these alterations? Uh, if you go back to the lab, uh, you realize that we had very relevant uh, data as from the 60s that has been then confirmed and confirmed again in many sepsis models as a, a decrease in vascular density, in uh, capillaries, we have uh, some that are not perfused or uh, only intermittently uh, perfused, and therefore they do not participate in the gas exchanges. You also have heterogeneity between, uh, in areas that are close, a uh, few uh, microns. So it's sometimes very difficult to evaluate microcirculation and to think that uh, do more uh, flow, more perfusion, more pressure uh, is not necessarily the answer. Maybe we need to redistribute. Uh, so you have this diagram here to summarize. We have communication that is no longer taking place. You have chaos in communication. And when the system is uh, saying, well, there's an area where uh, oxygen uh, uh, is uh, lacking and we need more oxygen, and the information is not well transmitted to the more central areas, and therefore the system is not capable of responding. And this is mainly through uh, endothelial dysfunction because uh, that is what is used for the transmission of information. Then you have cells that are going to obstruct circulation, uh, such as red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, uh, that are going to uh, stick to the endothelium. And this uh, is the uh, mechanism of reaction to the infection to ensure that the white cells are going into a tissue. They need to stick to the endothelium first. So uh, what is initially an adaptive reaction when it becomes excessive is leading to these major alterations in terms of microcirculation. We also have a response and sensitivity to uh, vasoconstrictive and vasodilating substances, which is also dropping. So the uh, distribution of flows by a constricted and dilation uh, and dilating in different uh, locations is not optimal. So finally, you have uh, areas that are overperfuse. Uh, leading to high uh, SVO2 uh, and the opposite uh, with signs of hypoxia and uh, lactate. Just to illustrate with a picture of normal microcirculation, you have here the uh, venules, uh, capillaries. You can see that everything is perfused, and uh, you can see that there is good circulation in all of these vessels. In sepsis, you realize that uh, uh, venules are well uh, perfused. Some capillaries are also well uh, perfused, perhaps a little bit too much. And some capillaries, clearly, the uh, uh, red cells are not moving, and these areas are not being uh, perfused. So the distributive shock concept uh, uh, becomes very clear when you see these pictures because you understand the uh, physiopathology of sepsis. In figures, uh, we have a drop of uh, uh, density, of uh, vascular density, uh, uh, with uh, some well perfused and others less well perfused than normal. And they, uh, heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity, which is also a very important element uh, uh, between areas that are very close. 
so uh, we need to try to uh, recruit microcirculation. You can see that in literature, there are many, many, many authors in the world that have demonstrated very much the same thing, the same type of interaction with drop of perfusion in capillaries and uh, heterogeneity between uh, areas that are very close, a few microns apart. You, have, you can have other types of alteration. Uh, uh, you, can, you have here an, another type of method to evaluate endothelial uh, reactivity, uh, uh, sublingual, and you have many, many uh, studies showing the same thing, this dysfunction, endothelial uh, dysfunction uh, is uh, also very clear. Is it relevant for the outcome? Yes, quite clearly. When the uh, patients uh, have been uh, at least a little resuscitated, then uh, the microcirculation is, an, is a very clear indication of survival uh, uh, rather than uh, the uh, blood pressure that is so commonly used. Uh, what is even more important, you have uh, an increase in severity of uh, uh, risk of death uh, as the severity of the symptoms increases. So it's very important to improve this microcirculation. What is the exact threshold needed in order to be completely reassured? Now, I think we don't have sufficient data in the literature yet to say, well, we want 70, 80, or possibly 90 percent of small vessel perfusion. So. Uh, this is work that we still need to do to um, be able to use this uh, even more uh, frequently uh, uh, at the bedside. You have reactivity tests giving exactly the same type of information on the outcome with, again, a, a, a clear uh, a link demonstrated here. Evolutions are also very important because just simply having an indication that something's wrong uh, is fine, but if uh, when manipulated there's no modifications in time, then it's um, just mildly interesting. It's an interesting uh, snapshot to, uh, uh, just to select uh, uh, patients and salt them out. But you can see that uh, in time, the survivors have an improvement in microcirculation. Non survivors are going into shock. You have them in here in red with no improvement. And more importantly, those that uh, get out of shock, and everybody's very happy, they're going to be uh, weaned from catecholamine, but they will have death later uh, from organ failure. You can see them here. In blue, uh, they uh, again had no improvement of microcirculation during shock. It's it also valid for other techniques, and you can multiply the type of techniques uh, used to demonstrate it uh, tissue, uh, CO2, uh, earlobe. And uh, uh, I think uh, it's quite clear that this uh, uh, is also something useful. What is the importance of timing of interventions? Again, it's a very interesting point because things vary in time. When you try to um, intervene, this is figures of Mathieu Lecan, and you can see that uh, early intervention leads to improvement of microcirculation at kidney level. It's not completely normal, but it's a lot better than uh, uh, non-resuscitated sepsis. But if you wait too long, even with the same quantities, you can see that you go back to total flow in the kidneys, but distribution remains very broad, which demonstrates that there's still heterogeneity that remains important, and that efficacy is therefore reduced. So we need to be uh, very early in our interventions. Another aspect is that microcirculation also varies depending on whether you uh, look at it early or late. You have figures here in terms of microcirculation uh, with uh, average figures and mean uh, figures, uh, which was uh, in a worse situation uh, early than uh, late. So the cutoff might be different, but outcome uh, is just as good early as late, but we need to retarget uh, uh, our therapeutic objectives when we want uh, intervention either early or late. Now, is it useful? to have uh, uh, microcirculation-targeted therapy. Well, we still have a lack of uh, uh, patients, as the Canadians like, 20,000 patients that demonstrate that if you manipulate this and you have three drops of uh, solution X, then you have an improvement of microcirculation and you have an improvement of uh, uh, outcome uh, over 50 years. We don't have that yet. What we do have is figures that look a little bit more ridiculous, but it's still useful uh, from the uh, physiopathological point of view. They demonstrate if you manipulate microcirculation, and if you can see what happens, uh, if you look uh, over the human, 
human uh, 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 period. That's three hours later in terms of resuscitation. And then uh, the next day, you have an improvement uh, of the uh, uh, score of organ dysfunction. If you don't improve microcirculation, you can see here that on the next day, there's uh, uh, a worsening uh, of that score. So it seems to be relevant. What are the uh, interventions that can be used? I think that we need to discuss the impact of fluids because it's quite interesting. We looked at the effect uh, uh, of uh, fluid uh, challenge in, in uh, patients uh, uh, that were taken early, 12 uh, hours or 24 hours, you can see here in blue a clear improvement of microcirculation. If you look at other patients taken uh, in later after 48 hours of sepsis, even if you have an improvement of the heart rate, uh, microcirculation is no longer really affected, which demonstrates that uh, perhaps it is not really the fluids that are uh, the uh, uh, solution after a certain time of sepsis. And I think this is what we heard about from the previous speakers. In early phases, fluids are good. A little bit later, it becomes less useful. Another very interesting uh, study, uh, the uh, Manente Bull team, or rather it's another uh, team but in the same hospital, um, they also looked at the uh, uh, impact of uh, uh, passive uh, uh, leg movements. Passive uh, leg movements here, what you can see is more interesting is the aspect of the uh, uh, vascular challenge, and you can see that it Im also improves uh, microcirculation uh, with these early patients, and that the uh, first bolus of liquid uh, of fluid improved 5.1 to 5.9, uh, the heart rate as well as the microcirculation. The, they, then they had a second bolus immediately after with the same patients. Uh, uh, on the basis of the predictive test, they were supposed to react to a uh, vascular challenge. And uh, there they saw that we moved from 5.9 to 6.5, which was also significant. So in terms of microcirculation, there is no longer any important effect. So very quickly, there seems to be a saturation of the effect. It is useful, but in relatively small quantities. Difficult to know whether it's 300, 500, or a liter. We can't say it at this stage, but a certain quantity might be necessary, and beyond is probably less necessary to uh, uh, continue uh, increasing the fluids. A final interesting study from Lithuania, uh, with the assistance of Christian Bonmont, I also looked at patients, uh, again, uh, with uh, uh, fluid therapy, uh, fluid challenge. You have uh, uh, also here the, uh, uh, the group where nothing has changed. And you can see that those which had an alteration of microcirculation initially, those patients, or at least most of them, had an improvement of microcirculation. And what was even more interesting in terms of uh, uh, organ failure score, on the next day, they had a drop. Uh, of that score, at least for most of them. Some had no modification, but most had a drop, so it was quite significant. Those patients that had a microcirculation that was uh, more or less normal to begin with did not have modification in microcirculation under the impact of fluids, uh, uh, but uh, uh, again, uh, no modification of organ failure scores. So they're also suggesting that if you have access to microcirculation, it's probably quite interesting to uh, take a look at its alterations. If, it's altera if there is alteration, try fluids because it might improve the situation. If microcirculation is normal, don't go for fluids because it's probably not necessary. It's not really going to uh, modify tissue uh, perfusion. Uh, other types of uh, transfusions are uh, interesting. Red cells, uh, no great modification. There's uh, clearly a certain sensitivity among some patients with microcirculation here on the left that is uh, altered and ha get an improvement. And you can see that those had a normal uh, microcirculation could even have a degradation of the situation. So again, start out by measuring microcirculation from the beginning can enable you to uh, identify those patients uh, that could benefit the most from transfusion 
uh, for, with uh, hemoglobin levels that are uh, um, really uh, uh, quite uh, uh, classical 3, 4. Oxygen is the next question. Uh, uh, some have uh, suggested uh, hyperoxia. We need to be careful here. Because because we've demonstrated uh, uh, with some uh, volunteers so that administering oxygen to these volunteers of uh, vasoconstricted microcirculation, but also led to the disappearance of a certain number of uh, capillaries, and uh, this effect is transitory. It is transitory, but it does persist. Uh, and over half an hour, we're not going back to base value. And this is an important point. If we give too much oxygen to the patient, uh, because I think we're doing the right thing, uh, go for a 100% mask uh, uh, is not looking too well. But sometimes it's not all that good, because it can be deterioration of uh, uh, microcirculation. Of course, if you have uh, hypoxemia, uh, that's a different case. But uh, uh, with uh, a patient uh, uh, that's in a normal condition, uh, vasoconstricted, uh, uh, the reflex of the oxygen mask is not necessarily the right one. Vasoactive uh, agents, uh, well, um, uh, dibutamine uh, is uh, one example in uh, animal substance improved microcirculation, uh, but also redox with uh, uh, a drop in a redox state and an improvement of uh, uh, microcirculation uh, in tissues in humans. It's the same effect, but there are less. Uh, there's less data, uh, but uh, the situation in terms of lactate also is also improved. Uh, um, uh, vasopressor uh, is a different situation because. Uh, as we said uh, in saw in the previous uh, presentation, uh, there's tissue perfusion. Some organs are more sensitive than others. Uh, uh, so when we talk about tissue uh, perfusion, you have to think uh, regionally. The organ that you're measuring, which is not always reflecting uh, certain other organs, uh, which can be a little bit more sensitive. But do remember that there can be a, a non-negligible uh, impact on the uh, total situation of the uh, organ and microcirculation as well. But it's the same as for uh, heart rate. It's uh, a choice between uh, microcirculation and blood pressure, and things become uh, complicated. With vasoconstrictors, you're also restoring uh, perfusion, but you also have vasopressors, which vasoconstrict. And this can have a negative effect in terms of microcirculation. But in normal conditions, if you're not uh, hypertense, uh, giving uh, uh, this can uh, improve uh, blood pressure, but it can drop local uh, perfusion. In, uh, uh, normal tensive sepsis, uh, it can also uh, reduce microcirculation. But if microcirculation is altered and uh, uh, blood pressure is very low, we have a 45 here, then in those cases, uh, restoring uh, perfusion pressure can improve microcirculation. Uh, this has also been confirmed by uh, uh, the group of Jean Teboul uh, demonstrating that in uh, uh, hypertense uh, humans, uh, uh, it can also have an effect. What's the optimal uh, outcome? Well, we don't have any data, but there's a certain individual variation, non-negligible. Some uh, patients benefit from uh, um, higher levels, and uh, with others, it's the other way around. So you need an uh, individual evaluation of the patient. Very uh, last word on uh, vasodilatory uh, agents. We have a, uh, an agreement with the Dutch uh, company. Uh, the Dutch have, of course, been uh, leaders uh, and uh, promoters of uh, the use of these uh, agents. Uh, still clean uh, improves microcirculation. It's been demonstrated. It's easy if you have systemic administration where you can have associated hypertension uh, in terms of perfusion. And the initial study of the Dutch was a non-negligible improvement of microcirculation. However, I have a very small group of patients, and uh, uh, there is also uh, jointly a lot of fluids. In a second study, uh, the effect was not so marked. You can see that between the greys and the whites, there's not much difference, and therefore there's no real improvement. Um, so remember that from the beginning, microcirculation was not that bad in both groups, so there was not much to be improved, really.
The uh, effects of inhaled NO has also been studied recently. It's also quite disappointing. There's no major difference, no, si no serious modification of microcirculation uh, with uh, inhaled NOs compared to a placebo. Uh, inhibit ACA inhibitors uh, in the lab, we had an improvement of microcirculation. You can see it in gray as compared to controls in white. No impact on the outcome of the patient. Modulation of endothelial function can also be useful. It can be done through vitamin C that uh, does improve microcirculation and uh, acts through a mechanism uh, which depends on uh, uh, endothelial uh, NOS. You also have uh, other means of modif modifying this by BH4. Uh, uh, altered in sepsis, uh, so that there is a decoupling uh, of uh, ENOS. Uh, so instead of having a local uh, phasodilatory NO, uh, we have a uh, O2, which is uh, uh, not good. Uh, so uh, we tried in the lab to uh, use uh, tetrahydrobiopterin, and we had an improvement in animal subject as compared to the control group. There was a drop in heterogeneity as compared to the control group. And more interesting, it was associated to an improvement of uh, the signs of organ failure, endothelial permeability, and the outcome. So as a conclusion, we have uh, alteration of microcirculation as a phenomenon uh, that has been well demonstrated uh, in our uh, patients uh, in ICU, in sepsis and septic shock. These alterations are due to a number of factors uh, which are uh, independent uh, from those that uh, uh, modify a hemodynamic, uh, systemic, and therefore classical uh, choices have a, a low effect in restoring microcirculation. You probably need to try something else. We have I haven't uh, found the final solution yet, but uh, uh, probably uh, uh, modifications of ENOS seem promising. Thank you for your attention.